next guest is one of the greatest songwriters ever, period. Uh, he's worked with everyone from Michael Jackson to Whitney Houston and a billion other people. Uh, we had him on the show breaking down some of his massive catalog during Songs and Stories Hour. It was so hard to pick songs because he's got so many. But earlier this month, he won his 13th Grammy for his work with SZA on her song Snooze, which is incredible. And on top of all of that, he's also passionate about helping pave the way for the newest generations of musicians, especially in his hometown of Indianapolis. Please welcome back Kenneth Babyface Edmonds, everybody. <laughs> You came yes. up and took me off guard, and I was like, I never really go to many award shows. Like, music ones really right, isn't yeah. always working, but like, that was really fun. It was really fun. I loved watching, I love SZA's performance. It was yeah, so she good. Great. She did great. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, two weeks after the Grammys, um, you went home to Indy with an actual purpose, right? Yes. What I went that? there um, working with this group, uh, um, Music Wheel Program, and it's, um, it's a charity organization. They bring back music to the schools. Yeah. Schools, you know, you can't find music in schools these days anyway. Yeah. So we went back to Indianapolis to actually give instruments to 20 different schools. Not just instruments, but also they uh, have the students. Uh, they have teachers for the students. Yeah, and like the curriculum and, for that. And, yeah. And, and actually, teachers that um, actually teach the teachers how to teach. Yeah. So it's like it's a great program, and it's always something you know I always like to support. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I feel like we benefited from those people when we no were question. young. But last time Babyface was here, he talked about the first song he wrote in sixth grade. I love this. Let's take a look. You have written so many amazing songs. Do you remember your first song like you ever wrote? First song I wrote was uh, in sixth grade. Um, here I go falling in love again. And you were this guy at, in the sixth grade? I love it. I, I was that guy in sixth grade. Saw a girl and fell in love with her. And, and I used my brother's uh, friend's guitar of a cousin and it was a right-handed guitar. I picked it up and learned some chords and wrote this song for her. She oh. never heard it. Ah, I love that. I just love, like, from a very young age, you've been that guy just writing songs, sweeping people off their feet. It's just a, like, an amazing talent and gift. Well, I don't know if I was sweeping anybody off their feet at that point. That's well, for sure. Well, you definitely <laughs> helped a lot of people make some babies. I'm just all saying. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you, and what a service to society, sir. Um, so, did you, did you have teachers, though? I feel like I had teachers that really um, believed in me and saw something that maybe I didn't even see. Did you have that? When yeah, I had a time? teacher, Mr. Dunn, in uh, fifth and sixth grade. Yeah. He was, uh, like, the choir teacher. and I, I sung in the choir. I didn't get to join the big choir, which was the crickets, the Crooked Creek crickets. But they were good, and I really wanted to actually be in it. I wasn't good enough to be in it. My brother got in it. What? Yeah, I didn't. I never does your got brother it. hold this over you still, he to, does, this still to this I day? I would. Okay. <laughs> still to, and uh, I still remember. We're the Crooked Creek Crickets, and we are really hip. Aww. Best elementary chorus in Washington Township. Anyway. Um, Aww. You were right there on the side of the stage. I want to be a part. Oh my God. I never got to sing that song because I was. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the saddest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, but well, you, you've done well. It's okay. They, now they're like, damn it, we should have had them in the cricket choir. But what advice do you give kids? Like when you see that, because we were those kids, you know, so what advice do you give them that you f feel like best serves them? I think the biggest thing is always trying to be honest, being, yeah. uh, be authentic to yourself. Don't try yeah. to be somebody else. Yeah, um, which is hard to do when you're a kid because we're all kind of imitators. Well, yeah, first. you're imitators, but some, you, you find yourself in that way. I, I always wonder the same thing about you because you're able to sing so many different things from so many different genres. How did that happen for you? Where did you where did you pick that up? I loved everything. I loved everything from Guns N' Roses to Celine Dion to Rosemary Clooney. I loved everything. I loved any I I still do. I love any kind of music. I feel like it's 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 it it's just a powerful way to communicate, and I feel like I had a hard time communicating. I know that's hilarious. Yeah. I have a talk show. But, <laughs> exactly. but I really did have a hard time. My mom like shoved a journal for me because I, I had a really hard time expressing myself because I was afraid. I was a people pleaser, and I didn't want to hurt someone's feelings, or I didn't want to be honest. And music was like the one place I felt like I could find honesty. Did you talk a lot when you were a kid? No. Not until I did. I, I did at a certain point when I found music. I was like around yeah. 13. And I think... Um, 
finding, and maybe you have this in common, when you find that you're good at something as a kid and you feel special at something, yeah. then my whole personality like changed. But right. I was shy, and you don't believe me, but I was actually shy at first. I, then yeah. what happened to me? Because I was shy and I, I still don't talk a you're lot. You're still shy. <laughs> <laughs> you talk, you talk. I think once you get to know people. Yeah, no question. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think that music it did, for me, it gave me a voice. And, and I, I was so shy, I wouldn't talk or say anything. And, and then once I started doing music, then it gave me a sense of purpose. Yeah, and it's honestly my drug. It's my, I love yeah. it. I love, but, and it's a good drug of choice, I say. Yeah. Um, not too many repercussions. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Babyface is here to support Music Will, a nonprofit putting more music in public schools, which is super important, y'all. It was founded by my next guest. He is a former first grade teacher. We love teachers here. Please welcome Dave Wish. You start. You started Music Will in your classroom, right? Yeah, I started a free guitar class for my first graders. I was in a school that had no music program. Yeah. And um, so I started with 35 kids playing guitar. I started teaching them the music that they knew and loved because yeah, that's what that I. Into. That's that. Yeah, like that Selena and the Backstreet Boys yeah. and all these people. Yeah. Um, and every kid in the school wanted to be in my after school guitar class. So I was doing mm. first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, before school, after school, during my lunch hour. Oh, God. And then I started reaching out to other teachers because I couldn't take on any more students. Our kids started writing their own music and we started selling tapes and CDs to fundraise to buy more instruments. Yeah. So I had more instruments than I knew what to do with. Then they started playing those CDs on the radio and people like Carlos Santana and Bonnie Raitt and John Lee Hooker, may he rest in peace, yeah. came out and started supporting us. And it occurred to me that I was enjoying teaching the teachers how to run these kinds of music classes just as much as I enjoyed teaching the kids myself. But by teaching other teachers, we could reach a lot more kids. Yeah. And so I left teaching in 2002 to found, uh, it used to be called Little Kids Rock, now yeah. it's Music Will. Um, and since that time, I've had the pleasure of watching over 5,000 public school teachers bring the transformational gift of music to over 1.7 million kids um, in schools across the country. It's so incredible. Well, as we said before, Babyface made a special visit to his hometown to announce the music program, so take a look. Today, I'm at Carl Wilde Elementary School with Babyface, who is helping us bring the gift of music to 20 new schools here in Indianapolis. Give it up for Babyface. Events like this are so exciting and really meaningful because kids get to see a hometown hero, a person of huge stature, come and stand up for them. And they learn how much they matter. I grew up here in Indianapolis. I, I was very shy, still am. He lived here. He knows exactly what it's like here. And he discovered the love of music and community through music here. I didn't, didn't say a whole lot, but music was so important to me. I was so glad that they had a music program there because it was the thing that gave me a voice. And music just gives you a power. And suddenly you're not shy anymore. Suddenly you're able to just kind of you just kind of explode, and it gives you this confidence that you don't even know that you have. So, to help all of you continue your musical journey, we're going to show you a big surprise. A big highlight of the day was when Babyface revealed some of the hundreds of instruments that are going to be going out to 20 Indianapolis schools thanks to his generosity. Three! Like, first of all, there's no, I was saying in the, while we were playing it, there's no harder audience to speak in front of than sure. young kids to keep the attention and be like, are you still there? <laughs> this guy was amazing. I think anybody that, if I would have had you as a teacher, I'd probably be doing a whole lot more. Because, no, because you, you, you inspire, really inspire. Excite, ignite, yeah. You, you really make people, wow. But I, but I would ask you guys, so the thing, when I think of my own teaching, the thing that I, that I feel proudest about is that I understand the power that teachers have over yeah. kids. And the greatest obstacle to a kid achieving what they would like to is, is fear. It's, it's feeling un, uncertain, mm -hmm. right? And so to me, the best teachers, and I, I, I get to work with like thousands of teachers across the country. I'm endlessly inspired by them. And yeah. a great teacher 
sees that insecurity, finds that place where a child is yeah. feeling, I don't know if I can do this, and they find the way to be like, no, you got this. Pulls out the best version you of it. You totally yeah. got this. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Agreed. Yeah. Well, we love what you are doing, and we are not alone. Uh, Zildjian, the world's leading maker of cymbals, drumsticks, and mallets, wants to help Music Will continue their goal to reach one million more students by 2027. So they're donating $10,000 just to help out. I want to match that 10. You're going to match the 10? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, hell, I'll match the 10. I was, that, that's incredible. There you go. You got 30,000 coming your way. Great idea. Great idea. I'm going to match the 10. You're going to match the 10. It's like a game show. Everyone's winning. Um, we'll, we'll put it back in Indianapolis. Put it back in Indianapolis. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh, I love what you're doing.